Article 19, shall the Town of Hampton vote pursuant to RSA 79E3 to rescind its adoption by Article 31 of the March 2011 Town Meeting of the provisions of the of New Hampshire RSA 79E that permitted the Board of Selectmen as a local governing body to accept for consideration requests for community revitalization tax relief incentives filed in accordance with the provisions of RSA 79E for commercial structures and new residential structures, especially affordable housing located along Lafayette Road, the High Street Business Zone, the Professional Office Zone, Ocean Boulevard, Ashworth Avenue, the Business Seasonal Zone, and the Industrial Zone that represent compact development areas for the replacement or substantial rehabilitation of qualifying structures to include replacement of qualifying structures that have been destroyed by fire or acts of nature and whose rebuilding has not been started before January 1, 2010 or completed by January 1, 2011, regardless of how long the destruction occurred before the town has voted to adopt RSA 79E and that modified the provisions of RSA Chapter 79E so that for the structures that have been so destroyed, their value for taxation purposes during the tax relief periods afforded by RSA 79E colon 5 shall reflect the pre-destruction assessed value as updated to the value that would have been in place for buildings had they not been so destroyed. By the town's adoption of the provision of RSA 79E, the selectmen were allowed to grant up to five years of tax relief on new or rehabilitated structures from taxes on the values added that are in excess of the original taxable values. By the passage of this article, that authority would be rescinded. Majority vote required, recommended by the Board of Selectmen, three to two. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 19? Moved by Mr. Bean, seconded by Ms. Woolsey. Uh, is there anyone who wishes to be heard on Article 19? Senator Stiles. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I am Nancy Stiles, One Hayden Circle, and I rise in opposition to Article 19. The adoption of the, of the revitalization tax relief incentive approved by voters in 2011 is a tool that you, the selectmen, have to offer the, in the development and the economic growth of our town. RSA 79E5, Roman 4, gives the governing body, that is the Board of Selectmen in this community, the authority to adopt local guidelines to assist in determining the appropriate du duration of the tax ass assessment relief period. You might establish guidelines for re revitalization of a new business in town. You might consider that for five years. Workforce housing, you might consider that the same. Luxury housing, you may reduce the number of years for that. It's all in your hands. I remind everyone that the relief is only on the additional value of the property, not on the amount currently being paid in taxes. So this does not hurt the taxpayer or it doesn't shift any burden onto them. This relief has been approved in only one situation that I am aware of, and I have heard it said that it wasn't fair to other taxpayers. In that particular case, the town was receiving, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on these numbers, <clears throat> about $2 million in tax revenue on the property. With the new structure, the town is immediately receiving $10 million and knows that in the fifth year it will increase possibly to 15 million depending on the um, marginal tax increases over that period of time. I see that increase as being fair, not only to the new facility giving the builder time to generate return on investment, but all to also to all of the taxpayers with the immediately $8 million increased revenue and a known increase to follow. Consider if you don't have this tool and a builder walk, wanted to, to raise the old restaurant on the marsh. I frequented it a lot when I was a kid. It's right on Route 1 and possibly replace it with a small business, perhaps marine research, and employ 10, 15, 20 people. By keeping the revitalization tool in your toolbox, you could, according to any guidelines that you establish, offer him or her 
tax relief for a number of years on the increased tax assessment, which would help in the development of that business. I think it is very short-sighted to pass this article. And I urge the voters to reject Article 19 by voting no, with a vision to see that our town reaches out for revitalization and promote economic vitality and growth in this community. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Senator Stiles. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 19? Mr. Rage. Chuck Rage, 121 Ocean Boulevard. I, I have a problem that um, 79, uh, Article 19, 7090E, um, that you're looking to uh, pass this article. The last year at the election, it, it went by a supermajority. I believe 72% of the town voted for 79E. This is a tool that the selectmen can use to their discretion. It's not, everybody isn't granted any type of tax relief automatically. This is a tool that you could use to improve in town as well as the beach. I hear a lot of people saying this is, this is just for the beach. It isn't just for the beach, it's for the whole town. This will move the town forward to add tax revenue to the town. I uh, urge you to vote no on Article 19. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rage. Mr. Nyan. John Nyan, 2 Walnut Avenue. A couple of years ago, we had a, uh, what I would call a uh, non-candidate campaign to support 79E. Um, and in 2011, I was one of 72% of the voters here in Hampton that voted for 79E. That was just a couple of years ago. I think uh, in respect to Selectman Bean, who I, I highly respect, and understand that he uh, brought this, this Warren article uh, up for this year. Um, I, I think when you look at, yes, since 2011, there has been one application. And that application was with Green and Company. Uh, the, uh, I should say uh, the, the homeowners uh, living on the beach in the new complex where the old salt used to be. This was a prime example of what 79E could do to help support individuals that were looking uh, to build and, and grow in a particular area of Hampton. I understand that there's been frustration and whether or not it was fair or not fair. But to try to rescind something that 72% of us said yes to because of just one example, I don't think is right. I think we have to look at what's in the future. And as Mr. Rage said, this is not just about Hampton Beach, but it's in the entire Hampton, town of Hampton. God forbid we have a business in downtown Hampton that people frequent every single day and God forbid something happens. We should be that organization of people that would want to support the rebuilding of that complex, that business. The law states, as Senator Stiles indicated, the law states very clearly that the final decision on do you or do you not provide this tax release to this business lies in the hands of five people, our Board of Selectmen. They can say yes or they can say no, depending on what the merits are. So I, I believe that if there is an example or a case that comes up in the future that is questionable, it is in the hands of the Board of Selectmen. But to try to repeal, once again, a very, very supportive Warren article just a couple of years ago because of one application and one opinion of that application, I think is wrong. So I urge the, the residents of, of Hampton to vote no 
on this warrant article. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nyan. Ms. Latimer. I think this article is an example of what we do worse sometimes in this town. We put things forward for the betterment of the community, and then we almost immediately turn around and rescind it. The intentions of this article are good. When we have tragedies in this town, whether it's at the beach or it's midtown or wherever it is within our borders, it affects not only the buildings involved, but those that are surrounded. And thus it affects all of us. Fires in recent histories that we can think of left gaping holes. And it was this article coming in that gave a little hope and people looking differently at the redevelopment of those areas. It's not our fault that the first example out of the gate was an all or nothing and we gave them the farm without much discussion about middle ground. I myself may have chosen to say, well, maybe there's somewhere in the middle that we can ease out a new territory with this. But by and large, we do need some tools in a community to redevelop and redevelop from the tragedies that strike that are never planned for but happen instantly. And not only, again, I'll reiterate, take out the businesses and the buildings that are involved, but also the, the surrounding community around that. As you watched through the years, the buildings that burnt on Ocean Boulevard, and I point those out because those are examples that really stick out in our mind. If you went to the south of the old salt, those businesses suffered. If you looked at the gaping hole on the A block, that area became less than what it was. Years ago when we had big fire downtown, it has taken how long to get businesses to want to go back down there? Why throw away the only tool you have to entice someone to put their foot out. But with that, I would also caution needs to be, this article needs to be kept in place, not be rescinded, but to be better dealt with in the future because some of what people were against was giving it all away all at one time. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Latimer. Ms. Preston. Hi, uh, Bob Preston, 35 Campton Street. Um, I'm not going to rehash what the other uh, fellows just said, but there's one, one point that hasn't been brought up. You know, the night of the surf fire, if you're going to have a fire of that magnitude, that was the right block to have it because the fire department was able to fight it from all kinds of angles and streets and parking lots. Going back to the old salt fire, I owned the building next to the old salt at the time. And I got a call that afternoon that a fire started, and the fire department was there very, very quickly. You know, if that ever happened at, at night, there's no doubt in my mind that we would have lost a major part of that block. And that's when 79E will really be important. If we have a devastating fire, I know it was hot in the old salt in the Springfield, but it didn't hurt the, be the beach as much as it possibly could have if we had that fire at midnight. So this is a tool. I think we ought to keep it in, in the toolbox, and I hope that the citizens will support that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Preston. Barbara Kravitz, 8 St. Cyr Drive. I would echo the remarks of Senator Stiles, Mr. Noyes, and Ms. Latimer that uh, the selectmen are more than adequately capable of expressing judgment on how to use this tool and I would not favor rescinding it. I want to add that this is an opportunity for the town to think about other tools that may help uh, incent businesses in particular to come into the community. I suggest that we look carefully at economic redevelopment zones that uh, 
would uh, bring about some state credits to uh, entice those who might want to come to this community. It's another tool. Thank you, Ms. Graff. Mr. Rice, and then we'll, um, we'll look to wrap this up. We've had six straight no's, so we're really looking for some uh, a different approach or, or to conclude the article. Mr. Rice. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Fred Rice, 15 Heather Lane. Uh, a couple of years ago, Senator Stiles was the prime sponsor of the piece of legislation that led to the enactment of RSA 39E, uh, the piece that we're talking about right now. Uh, the entire rest of the, of the uh, Hampton delegation, I was one of them, was very proud to be a part of that. We worked really hard to try and get this passed because we had an awful lot of support from people here in the town who said we need something that will help us to accelerate getting these devastated areas put back together. A little bit of an incentive that will help business people who want to make this town grow. As a result, this was passed and this is in the form of what you call enabling legislation. Doesn't mean that you have to do it. It means that you can do it. And that's what this is at the present time, and that's what it would remain. You don't have to rescind something just because you didn't use it last week. You still have it there as a possible. Now, to think for a minute that we're never going to have another fire anywhere in the town of Hampton that's going to destroy a business, God forbid, an essential business here in the town, is rather naive. There will be fires that will do damage. There will be other natural catastrophes that will do damage to things in this town that are important to us. It isn't quite the same as a homeowner's insurance that protects the value of the property on all of this. Sometimes the businesses have a bigger hurdle to climb over in order to rebuild. It's been said before that this is not a zero-sum game. Uh, this is not something where anybody loses. You maintain the same tax base that you've had, and you're only talking about a relief on the difference. And the example that was given uh, of the uh, uh, tax increase on the A lot uh, thus far is, is a significant example of that. So if this goes through, you're going to say, gee, we're going to deny every business uh, a, a, a bit of assistance on the part of the town to rebuild itself just because we think it's not fair. Things enacted by this town should not be divisive. Fair pits one group of people against another, and we shouldn't be doing that. We shouldn't be doing that in this body right here. If you have an, a, a businessman who has the incentive and the drive to own a business to begin with, which most of us in this town are not brave enough to do, then we should help that individual get back there because they provide the goods and services that we rely on to have the town run the way it does right now. So any incentive that we can provide, a small one provided it doesn't take away from anything, we should be doing that across the board. The only problem that I see in this article is that um, by not passing it, which I highly recommend that this not be passed, would, be, would leave in the, the provision the January 1st, 2010 to 2014 uh, restriction on the, on the building time. But we can't correct that in this article the way it stands right now. If we rescind this article and it goes away, we'd have to come back the next year and do that. But a five-year period to put this incentive in place is a good thing. And I hope that uh, the voters would uh, join me and everybody else who has spoken up here and vote against this article. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Mr. Jones or Mr. Moody. And I know I have a feeling that Mr. Dean is going to speak in favor of this. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Moody, uh, but we're looking to wrap this article up because we've had a chorus of no's um, and um, got a good flavor of what this article um, does. So, Mr. Moody. <coughs> Art Moody, imagine giving a tax incentive for condos, oceanfront condos, as we've done. The Ada the J to K Street law, uh, area, the sea spray condos and first floor commercial regarding the old salt fire that Bobby Preston mentioned. According to the picture across the top of the Hampton Union in late June 1999, there was only two lots affected of the six lots that became the old spray. 
yet all six lots are under this five-year tax cap, which I imagine added to the sales price of those condos and possibly the first floor commercial. This article mentions Lafayette Road Business Zone. I think it does. Business Zone, High Street Business Zone, Lafayette Road. Well, if, they, if you accept Article 5, rezoning, the only part of Route 1 and High Street, none of High Street will be business. And the only part of Route 1 that will be business is north of Ann's Lane, through the center down to Drakeside Road to 101 will be this new three zone thing, mm -hmm. business, but it won't be called business, historic, north, and so forth. South of uh, 101 is general zone on Route 1. It's funny on that sea spray that until the first construction of the sea spray, one of those lots was owned by the town, lease land. Yet it's going to be under the tax bit, too. I think it's time to get rid of this. It does put expense of services on the rest of us for people that can well afford businesses and get loans much easier than residential. Thank you, Mr. Moody. Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'm speaking in favor of this, uh, this article. Um, I think the, the uh, legislative history has been somewhat mischaracterized here. As you recall, we had a fire where the old salt was located on uh, Ocean Boulevard. There were certain forces in town that induced uh, our legislative representatives to pass a law to enable this, uh, this uh, economic stimulus to take place. Um, when I believe it was Senator Stiles put this forth, uh, it was an uptown country, uh, excuse me, an upcountry town that said, hey, this is a great idea, let's broaden it so that it includes us. And, and so it became much more expansive than just let's uh, provide tax incentives to fix the old salt building. And then, of course, we had the fire at the A Block pretty much in the same time frame. And this was passed. We subsequently adopted it. And, well, gee, we've given the tax incentive to the, old, the former old salt building. That's done, completed job. The A Block is currently under construction. So apparently the stimulus uh, wasn't necessary there. So the original motivation for us to uh, create this tool, to use this tool, as people like to call it a tool, well, that motivation is, has now been uh, completed. I mean, it's, it's time to put it back in the toolbox, actually, yeah. It's like, you know, you're working on your home and you've got a staple gun or a, a handsaw, a power saw, and, well, you're done, you're done using it. You put it in the toolbox. You don't keep it on the table. So this, this, this article is going to take it off the table. It's going to put it back in the toolbox. If we need to take it out of the toolbox as a legislative body, we have the power to take it out of the toolbox, put it on the selectman's table, but there is no more a need. The original need has been met. And I think that it's you know, pretty dangerous to keep uh, laws on the books that are no longer intended to be used. Just as dangerous to keep power saws and staple guns, et cetera, on the kitchen table when you're done using it. Just put them away. Vote, vote yes on this article. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Phil Bean, Selectman. Uh, I, I will be brief. Uh, this, of course, uh, is on 79E. The, the law specifically does uh, state in Section 6, uh, the local governing body of any town or city that has adopted this program may consider rescinding its action in the manner that we are executing today. So we're within the law. Uh, it has been referenced on the 2011 Warren Article 31 that was passed by a vote of 2080 to 786. The same folks that spoke so eloquently this morning in favor of it spoke in favor of it then. 
the gentleman before me, Mr. Moody, spoke in opposition to it. Specifically, in Article 31, that was presented for voters at the polls, specifically states that this article is especially affordable housing. And I'm reading right from the Warren article that was presented to you folks. Uh, Facts are stubborn things, and we'll get into some real numbers here in a couple of minutes. Mr. Bean, um, could you make sure you just get capture the microphone? Facts are stubborn things, but uh, we'll get into the, uh, the project that this relief was given. The square foot sale price for those units was between three and $400 per square foot. So it was given to a luxury condominium project. Additionally, as part of this 79A, it calls on the governing body to establish local guidelines to guide the governing body in ascertaining, determining how long, how much, and what value and what percentage will be afforded to any project. Uh, there was never any local guidelines established by any governing body in accordance with the law to make perhaps a more a sharp knife or uh, effective tool as folks have claimed for today. Uh, and pulling information from our staff and our department heads, uh, again, facts are stubborn things. For luxury condominiums, Hampton taxpayers, many of whom rehab their own houses, Hampton business owners, myriad projects that have not received this $176,000 tax relief. Um, have contributed $176,028.35 for this project. And again, that's for luxury condominiums, which are clearly in contrast than what was presented on the Warren article. So voters weren't deceived on that, but luxury is luxury. $176,000 that we pay that those folks didn't doesn't seem to me to be in the spirit of cohesion and collectivism, it does seem to be divisive. In terms of the planning process, the town planner was asked if during the approval of that project, if the implications of 79E and 9B, which is referenced, were discussed or brought up for consideration in terms of local guidelines and in the spirit of the law, and there was no consideration of 79A in that planning process. And again from the planner, there have been no local guidelines established to this day for this law. Finally, uh, in terms of cohesion and taxpayer uh, assistance, finance director has provided the data from the time of this fire, which was fully indemnified in the free market with risk management tools to those that suffered economic loss and property loss, and we know a little bit about that. There has been $79 million of infrastructure and improvement from the taxpayers in this town and state taxpayers. $79 million of effort, and that's one heck of a tool, and that's real money. And that was presented down there for this luxury condominium development to come in and sit at a full table with a very much different beach than what was 15 years ago. If you look at Article 9 that was just passed, uh, look at some of those salary increases. Look at the number of years there were no COLAs. Look at the people that provide the services. Look at the people that pay taxes fully and do not ask for a break. And you can start to say that $176,000 in change is huge money to this town. We cannot afford to be giving away that kind of money we need to keep that in house. I would vote, I would, I would urge you not to keep 79E in the toolbox, but to vote in favor as Selectman Woolsey and Selectman Pluff have and I have on this article. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. B. So we're going to close out um, Article 19 and, we'll and it'll appear on the ballot as printed and we're on to